Hello and welcome to this episode of Trash to Track. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at this very battered mainline Royal Scott that's been given to me by Pete over at Delft Junction. Now Pete gave me this and said that if I can do it up, get it running from its current basket case condition that I can keep it. I've got a bag full of bits here that have broken off it, side rods and luckily enough the space is out of the chassis. The tender is in absolutely horrific condition with this glue marks over it and it's missing a wheel. This uh, connector has been glued on in the past and it's loose on the top. Now Pete told me that this had been played with in the garden by some kids. Sand pits, mud, etc. You name it, it's been played with. And it is in pretty poor condition. The body shell is loose on the chassis. However, the name plates and deflectors are all there. There's a little bit of glue mark on it, but it it's far from being a derelict wreck, um, that's the body shell at least. So I'm going to have a look at this and see if we cannot restore it to running order. The buffers are complete, as are all the handrails, so I'll set that aside and we'll look at that later. Now all the side rods are gone, the rear wheel here, I bet that's split because it's moving. Um, the base keeper plate is loose, the screws are missing off that. So uh, with a bit of gentle persuasion, oh no, sorry, there's one screw there, so I'm going to remove that. And then with a little bit of gentle persuasion, that will come off and take the front bogey with it. Now, this is very similar to the Jubilee I did a couple of years ago. Now, taking the wheel sets out, you can see that the age old problem of split axles has occurred. Although the rear driving wheel doesn't look to be too bad, although on further investigation. It's all coming to pieces, so I'm going to have to look at getting some replacements. But this chassis block looks okay, and this should technically work. However, when I put power to each side of the chassis, there is nothing. Now, there's no short circuit. It's just not working whatsoever. So, I'm not surprised if it's been played within a garden and dumped in toy boxes, to be honest. So, I'm going to start by uh, stripping this down and removing these screws that hold the two chassis halves together there's also damage on those slide bars there into the cylinders so we'll have to address that and removing these three screws the chassis you also have to remove this screw on the back here um, my chassis wouldn't uh, come apart with that in and then once they're all removed i should be able to prise the two halves of this chassis apart but they are rather stuck, but eventually they come apart. There's the cardboard insulating sleeve. The gears look to be in very good condition, considering there's no uh, fluff or anything wrapped around them, not much anyway. And all the teeth appear to be intact, so at least that's one thing. There is some white gunge there. That will all have to be cleaned off. And now I'm going to remove the two screws here, which I can tell haven't been taken off before, as the red waxy stuff that was put on in the main line factory is not broken now main line put that on their screws so that they knew if anybody had tampered with their models uh, in the past so removing that brush covering there is no brush or spring in there so maybe somebody has been in here in the past and just not damaged those wax coatings but then removing this other brass uh, sorry the brush keeper there is a brush and a spring in there and lifting it out reveals a very dirty commutator faceplate. So we're going to clean this all up. The magnet is still relatively strong. And as regular viewers will know, a cotton bud of methylated spirits is my go-to method of cleaning all this gunk and crap out of here. There is rather a lot of it in this uh, motor housing piece here. And as I said, the commutator is absolutely filthy. It is a mixture of uh, carbon buildup, old oil, you name it, it's probably on here. So turning my attention to the commutator, I'm first going to remove a lot of the excess dirt with a cotton bud of meths. Uh, this comes off relatively easily, but some of it is ingrained, so very gently I'm going to use my fiberglass pencil. Um, you can see here that I haven't got the end on my pencil because it's not quite run out, but with the silver end on, I can't get... All of the fibers but once i've done that i clean it again with a cotton bud to remove any excess fibers and then i'm also going to clean the gaps 
with a toothpick and this is looking quite nice and shiny now so I am hoping this will fire into life when I reassemble it so that sits back in there and is indeed pulled back in by the magnetic force the motor retaining plate here this was also very dirty a lot of carbon uh, on the inside of this and a lot of um, external fluff and dirt so this is all cleaned out and then I put it back in I'm going to look at this white gunky stuff on the back here this was um, also cleaned off with a cotton bit of methylated spirits and the chassis and commutator actually come up pretty nice the chassis itself isn't damaged the metal is as it should be so emptying this bag of bits out the only two usable pieces in here really are the two black chassis separator pieces that I've just put up there towards those cogs as you can see these side rods are beyond repair but as luck would have it I managed to get hold of a spare set of wheels and valve gear for this model but I'll have a look at those in a moment I'm just going to clean up the existing brush I'm just going to wipe off the excess dirt off the brush face and going through my spares box I've also got a new brush and a spring for the other side to replace the one that was missing so there's the new spring going in and there's the uh, retainer I'll put that on the correct way around and then reapply the screws that we took out earlier the screw on the left hand side is longer than the one on the right the one on the left goes through the chassis block into the other side to pick up current from the other half of this split chassis design so now that's all in I'm going to put a small amount of silicon grease on the gear spindles as there was absolutely no lubrication in this model whatsoever old or otherwise on the gears it's either all been washed or worn away um, over the many years it's been a child's toy and the gears were cleaned and then these were refitted to their spindles making sure that everything turns nice and freely so I'm just going to add a tiny amount of oil onto that rear bearing there that is a very very small amount of oil turning the chassis over the uh, cardboard insulator goes in as do these plastic insulators that are in that bag of parts that Pete had supplied with me and then I can put the other half of the chassis back on making sure that there's no fluff or anything left on this reuniting the two chassis halves and then reapplying and retightening those screws that we took out earlier on now when you work on a split chassis loco when you test it with any sort of power controller or battery uh, battery especially don't hold the two metal halves in one hand as you will get an electric shock so now that the chassis has been rebuilt hopefully you can hear there that the motor is turning lovely and freely now it's all been cleaned now I've got some new uh, cylinders uh, parts here with the slide bars intact these were out of my spares bin that I'd accumulated when I did the Jubilee up so these are push fitted on and then a replacement wheel set that I managed to obtain as these really are beyond um, any sort of economic repair it would cost more in axles than what I actually paid for this entire wheel set and this wheel set has got good axles on it I've checked them all they are all good they're not cracked or split so we're going to fit these wheels to this chassis I'm just going to uh, clean the axles up because I don't know how long they've been in storage um, I did take them off an old damaged model but again I don't know how long it's been since that's run so now the chassis is upside down the wheels are dropped into place um, once I can correctly align them and make sure the quartering is all correct and those two motion bracket um, parts were also then push fitted back onto the chassis sides now what I did here I had to remove those cylinder and slide bar castings um, it, I found it easier to put those on with the wheels and side rods already in place so I'm just trying to untangle everything here and just to give it a helping hand in running as the chassis is quite worn I'm just adding a very very small amount of Pico Electrolube which is conductive lubricant onto those axles because the axles pick up and transfer the current through the chassis so these linkage parts here as I said these are a push clip fit onto the die cast chassis sides 
the piston rod is put into the slide bars and then the whole cylinder assembly is pushed onto the die cast lug and I do this very gently I don't want to break these cylinders and um, the originals on the model I can't use as they are beyond repair and then the same is repeated for the other side and once the wheels and cylinders and rods are all in the correct position I'm going to take it to my bench and test it now the initial test wasn't very promising it was very reluctant to run despite having been thoroughly cleaned and it's got conductive lubricant on those axles it was not happy running at all so I upended the model and um, applied power direct to the brushes which meant that the wheels and that were turning correctly and I was just fault finding at this point to see um, whether or not it was something I'd put together wrong but it turned out to be the rods were slightly stiff and the wheels off the donor model were also slightly oxidized and very dirty so upending the model and applying power to each side of the chassis I clean the wheels with my usual method of cotton but and meths and also polish them up with the fiberglass pencil to make sure that the wheels are nice and clean and shiny and once I've done that I'm going to refit the pony front pony bogey this um, has also got a, a new wheel added that was out of my spares box and now I'm going to test the chassis now the wheels have been cleaned and the test track's been cleaned to see what we're looking at now and as you can see it's a lot lot happier so at least this chassis is now running now the body shell itself was given a clean um, with some warm soapy water after being dusted off with uh, the initial paintbrush there and then I go to fit the body shell to the model and I come across another problem with this model now the screw that holds the body shell on at the back and the uh, plastic receptacle for the screw at the rear end of the cab was in good condition however the one on the front had been completely stripped and was actually cracked and broken open so the screw would go in but it wouldn't hold the loco and chassis together so what i did was i took the body shell off um i'm just clearing out the screw hole there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that hole with bicarbonate of soda. No, I'm not. It's baking powder. Baking powder, not bicarbonate of soda. So I fill it with baking powder using the flat bladed screwdriver as a little shovel. And once the hole was full, I just tamp it down a little bit there with a cocktail stick. Once it was full, I add on a few drops of this liquid Yoohoo super glue. Now the super glue and baking powder forms an instant solid chemical bond and once it's thoroughly dry i will be able to screw the screw back into it now the tender well this would not clean up i washed this two or three times but the glue marks on the side there would not come off at all and it's very very faded in fact it's just it's it's beyond repair so i actually managed to find a new tender now this is a late crest tender it's still BR green, but this one was missing two wheels, whereas the original was missing just one. So between the two tenders, we've got enough wheels for one. Now, this may be a bit of a Trigger's brew model, but for the price of the tender and those replacement wheels was £5, which was less than the price of a set of new axles. So I've not really broke the bank doing this model up, and it is going to return it to service. The original tender... Having that glue on the side is just beyond repair and I didn't want to go to the expense or time of repainting it. But having fit the new wheels, these were given a clean with a cotton bit of meths just to remove any uh, black carbon deposits off them to make sure it didn't go and be transferred back onto the layout. And the tender was set aside while I now try and refit the body to the chassis again. Now that that super glue is thoroughly cured and the small self-tapping screw goes through that hole there into that super glue and baking powder bond and holds the chassis and body shell together just as it should in fact it's a very tight fit now which is just how it should be one of the final things to do on this model was i repainted both of the smoke deflectors with rail match satin black because these had some yoohoo type glue marks on them so instead of trying to scrape them away, I just gave both deflectors a coat of satin black, which hid the shininess of the glue and uh, made this model look 
um, presentable again. I did the outsides and the insides of both deflectors. I have uh, sped this footage up just to save you uh, watching me painting it. And now that the model is back together, I'm going to put it on the bench there. And it does look rather nice. Now, there is a little bit of discrepancy in the green on the tender. But it was worth it than trying to mend or rectify this one, or indeed have it running with this battered and damaged tender. So we've managed now to rebuild this children's garden toy airfix Royal Scott, or mainline Royal Scott, back into operating condition. Now once I'd done this, I contacted Pete and I had some of his other locos, and I said to him I was going to meet him at Trains for You and hand them back over to him. Which was very good because um, all I'm doing here, by the way, is just running the loco in on the rolling road, so it's uh, so it's all nice and bed in. But uh, we also met up with uh, Graham Fulston of Lakeside Model Railway, and we had a good chin rag, and it was nice to meet some fellow YouTubers. Now, unbeknownst to Pete, he'd given me this model to keep if I could get it running. But when I met him up at Transview, I actually gave it back to him for his serviceable fleet over at Delft Junction. Now I've got several locos, I've got several um, LMS type locos in the pipeline for trash to track. And I said to him he could have this Royal Scott back, as it would save me trying to digitally fit it. And it was his, he bought it in a job lot of stuff and this was the broken one. So I'm just happy I've been able to rebuild this for him. And now it can take pride of place in his fleet over at Delft Junction. And I will leave a link to his channel down in the description. If you've got an engine you'd like to see featured on a future episode of Trash to Track, please email me at dansmodelrowers at gmail.com and we'll have a look again at it sent over and who knows, it may even feature in an episode all of its own. The Royal Scott here was stretching its legs on trains for use test track layout while me, Pete and Graham were having a chat. And uh, Pete was very happy that he was able to take it home. Thanks again for watching Trash to Track. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.